Okay, we're all set. <clears throat> Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Weathersfield Inland Wetlands and Conservation Commission meeting. Today is Wednesday, December 15, 2021. It is 7 31 in the evening. This is a virtual meeting in accordance with the governor's executive order. Um, at this time, is a uh, public meeting, just uh, public comment. Uh, seeing none, we'll be moving on to the public meeting portion. Um, this uh, public meeting is for application number 74021, Phoenix 1210 LLC, 1210 Celestine Highway, an application to construct new 25,000 square foot school building within a regulated floodplain. Um, could the uh, Owner, owner's rep, present, please. Uh, good evening, commission members. My name is Kevin Johnson. Uh, I'm with the engineering firm of Close Jensen and Miller. Uh, also with me this evening is Mr. Uh, Mike Panic, uh, applicant and owner, and also Mr. Chris Zabidio, uh, professional engineer with Close Jensen and Miller. So, just a little recap from the November 17th meeting. Um, I, I went through a fairly extensive presentation at that meeting. Um, basically, uh, this application is regarding the conversion of a two-story, 40,000 square foot medical building to a one-story, 25,000 square foot school. Uh, that additional uh, increase in footprint of the building uh, results in an additional uh, thousand plus cubic yards of flood storage. Uh, as you recall, that entire area at that lower level uh, is open. Um, basically, um, you know, after my presentation last month, there was a lot of discussion uh, centered on parking. Um, commission members uh, were asking, uh, you know, about pervious pavers. There was discussion on deletion of parking spaces, green space, etc. Uh, subsequent to that November meeting, uh, Mr. Panic and myself, we met with uh, Ms. Bradley and Mr. Uh, Greger. Uh, we discussed uh, different possibilities, um, you know, to uh, possibly include pavers or where we might or deletion of spaces, so forth. Um, Mr. Panic had reached out to the geotechnical engineer. Uh, if you recall, we mentioned there's a retaining wall on the west side of the proposed building. Um, the geotechnical engineer would not recommend the use of pervious pavers to infiltrate water behind the wall. Um, we looked at uh, potentially utilizing a portion of the fire lane um, not behind the wall and extending to the north uh, near the dumpster area. Um, I did reach out to uh, Mr. Dignati. Um, there's an email um, from Mr. Dignati uh, in your packet this evening. Um, we, we discussed the use of the pervious pavers and or the possibility of reducing the width of that fire lane. Currently it's 24 feet. Um, as indicated in Mr. Dignati's letter, um, he, he would not support the use of the pavers. Uh, his concern is that if uh, he has to set up an aerial ladder uh, behind that building with the outriggers, um, that the pavers would not be, you know, would not offer enough support. Um, there could be compression and so forth. Um, and he was also not in favor of any reduction of that 24 uh, foot width, uh, aisle width, um, you know, to try and create some additional green space that way. Um, I, I also believe that at the November meeting, uh, you know, I mentioned the use of these pervious pavers, um, you know, it, it they're, they're, they, they, they work best on as level of surface as possible um, that they're really not meant to be used you know where you've got you know grades such as we have you know in the five percent range on both the south and, and north side of the building uh, and, and the, 
as you recall from the site plan, the remainder of that site uh, is already built out and has a binder course of, of bituminous pavement. Um, so ultimately the applicant um, agreed to reduce uh, the parking by six parking spaces. Um, if, if I could uh, share my screen and just put the plan up quickly. Okay, Kevin, you should be able to do it. Give it a try. Okay, let, me, let me just get to the next sheet. So where we deleted the parking spaces is where the cursor is right now. Um, deleting those six parking spaces resulted in an increase in green space of about a thousand square feet. Um, so I, I uh, at this point, um, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Mr. Panic. Um, he would like to discuss uh, the parking needs and requirements and uh, talk a little bit about LID and uh, flood storage. So, <clears throat> Mike, if you would like to. Sure. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, good evening. Commissioners, Mike Panic, Phoenix 1210 LLC, property owner. First of all, I want to thank you for reconvening for this regular meeting tonight. From my experience of many times, meetings this close to the holidays are usually postponed. So I do appreciate everybody making time to make the meeting today uh, for this application. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Uh, during my speech, I'd like Kevin to be able to. Uh, screen share some information that uh, that I'm going to talk about as well. So I hope he'll be able to continue to screen share as I'm speaking. Um, so I believe uh, that my team and I may have muddied the waters at the previous meeting uh, that we were cross explaining three different topics and overlapping information, confusing the situation at the last meeting for your members. So tonight I'd like to hit the reset button and tackle each of the three topics individually uh, with the commissioner. The first topic is the number of parking spaces and the need for those parking spaces. The second topic is the LID, the low impact development. And the third is flood storage. Uh, so first of all, the number of parking spaces and the need. Many numbers were tossed around at the previous meeting when we were discussing them. Proposed spaces, needed spaces, original spaces, negotiated spaces, built spaces, uh, to be built spaces, uh, approved spaces. Again, all muddying the waters, I think. So tonight I'd like to talk about actual spaces, actual real-time spaces. Um, tonight I'd like to explain the actual number of spaces uh, on the basis for discussion, which after conferring in person and via email with the town engineer, he and I concluded that there were 610 spaces approved at the planning and zoning meeting in 2020. So the actual number of spaces to be built was supposed to be 610. The email uh, showing now on the screen is the concurrence uh, with Mr. Gregor and I, uh, that there was a two space disagreement, but we now agree that there was 610 approved parking spaces in 2020. So I wanna talk about that as an actual real number. Um, so moving forward, uh, I'll put up the map that I drew uh, on and I want to keep it there. There is some color coding that's somewhat visible uh, on the bottom there where it shows the 610 total spaces, including the 40 handicap. Uh, I'd like to uh, delineate and delegate those spaces as needed and show without a reasonable doubt that they're warranted and they're needed. Um, on this, I also highlighted in um, a pinky color the six spaces that I've agreed now, as Kevin had mentioned, to turn into green space. Um, and you'll see, Kevin, if you can point to the spaces that are going to be lost by the enlarged footprint, which are those 50 spaces. So when we talk about them, you'll know where those spaces are. Um, so we'll move on uh, from there. Uh, Kevin, you can put up the chart. So using the chart, 
um, you can see that building one needs 320 spaces. It's highlighted in green. Okay, that is uh, the method that we used. Highlighted in yellow, as discussed last month, is the change from daycare to medical office use. Um, so you can see the additional doctors that'll be there, the patients per day and the amount of space per hour. And I don't think at the last meeting, I don't think that there was any question that the 320 spaces, I think the commission agreed that that was a, uh, uh, a number that uh, was credible. Um, uh, from there, uh, we'll go over to where the cursor is now. You'll see the 610 on the current plan, handicap included, the 610 that we've agreed on. The building one need highlighted in green, the 320 spaces. And uh, we'll also reduce the six spaces that we're reducing to increase the green space on site, leaving an on site balance of actual parking spaces of 234, right where the cursor is currently on the monitor. Okay, so those are the available spots to be built for building number two, 234. Uh, with the potential tenant, Porter and Chester, that we talked about last month, writing a letter, which I believe was included in your package, they expressed that they need 175 students could be on site in the daytime and all at the same time, not staggered like was mentioned last month. And the staff and teachers could total $40. Uh, $40. I wish it was $40. Staff and teachers could uh, total 40 more vehicles on site along with the 175. So the actual need for building number two is 215 spaces. Some things I'd like the commissioners to remember, none of the students are bused to this school. And unlike the suggestion that was made that this be compared according to an ITE manual as a junior college, it's obvious that this school does not act or work on that same schedule where students are coming and going during the day like a junior college. Instead, this works more like a high school if you wanna think of it that way where all of the students gather once for the entire day and all drive to the property with no busing. That said, the 234 spaces that are remaining for building two, subtract the 215 of now actual spaces, leaves an actual excess of spaces of 19 spaces. Again, heard a lot of numbers last month about how much how we're over parking and over building and all that. We're actually 19 spaces in excess of what we needed. Uh, and with no way to know in that equation that 40 people of the people that are in that equation will be handicapped, meaning that all 40 handicapped spots will be used all at the same time, including all of the students, doctors, and so forth. Uh, if we have 610 and you know that 40 of them are, are uh, handicapped, we don't know that they're all gonna be used at site. So the 19 extra spaces could be needed. Uh, there will also be people like drug rep representatives that will come to building one that currently come to the 1260 building out in front that I see all the time. So they need parking when they come to, uh, to you know, solicit their medications. Uh, there will be visitors to building one. There's the possibility. There also is the possibility of some people who will travel to building one, the medical building, and need to be transported to the hospital, thus leaving their car parked in the lot for an extended time all very real possibilities, thus the 19 extra spaces on the lot could be used or needed in the calculation. <clears throat> if the 19 extra spots were being built on a parking lot that was, let's say 30 or 40 spaces total, and there was 19 extra, I could see where that could be looked at as excessive. But 19 extra spots on 610 actual is about 3%. Uh, so I don't think it's unreasonable to have 19 extra spots. Um, you know, I think that proves uh, where we're coming from. Um, uh, one only has to travel 100 yards to 1260 Southstein Highway, as we discussed last month, another medical building that I own, to see that the parking requirement there was met and legal in the eyes of the town. But it's not enough with cars routinely circling and looking for space. I don't believe the town wants to see me build another property with that same possibility of cars circling the parking lot. Um, I believe with all of this confirmed now via letters and charts and graphs and the giving back of six spaces, I believe that we've demonstrate the need for the parking uh, without any doubt. That concludes my 
discussion on the parking and I, I believe proves where we need to be. Second, not to be confused with the first is talk about the low impact development. As part of the approval process two years ago, we did a number of things to address questions at the design review level, at this commission's level, and at the planning and zoning level to provide alternatives, all at a substantial cost increase to the project. Since it was approved and built phase one, I see no reason for the town now to say this is an entirely new project when at the inland wetlands uh, level, our submission shows no new impacts to the wetlands and only item we are changing at this level is the flood storage capacity, which as discussed by Kevin is increasing. We have already built new wetlands, created, cleaned up existing wetlands, added water collection structures for the roof water runoff and enlarged islands two years ago at that time uh, to answer the town engineer's comments from two years ago, all part of the approval then. We are now limited since what exists that was built uh, to those approvals in the areas we could start to approach for LID features in, a, in that limited area, which Kevin has touched on a little bit, but I wanna just follow up. The balance of the two built parking at the site currently is at a 5% grade, which doesn't, as Kevin said, does not work. Uh, for low impact development. The balance of the parking is also the premium parking for building two and all right around the building. And even now I've eliminated six of those parking spaces to try to bridge the gap and, and you know, I, I can lose those six spots, bringing me down to the 19 that I discussed earlier as potential extras. And finally, the area behind building two that Kevin mentioned is the only flat area, which is which would be the best for pervious pavers and in the area I suggested at the last meeting, but after discussing, as Kevin said, with the town fire marshal, he will not approve uh, of it in, in this area as he needs for fire apparatus and accessibility. That correspondence is also part of the package in, in your submission. Also draining water in the area that would leach behind the large segmental block wall at the river's edge is not conducive for the area. Again, repetitive from what Kevin said. In finalizing this section on LID, we have made every reasonable effort both two years ago and now on this project to have and have certainly tried to quote maximize the extent practicable to consider the use of LID, which is what is in the current regulations. I believe we've met the obligation of trying. Uh, and lastly, the third thing, flood storage. I believe we just demonstrated flood storage will increase with the new design, which should now not be a question that needs an answer just a fact needed for the submittal. And I'm happy to have Kevin from Close Jensen and Miller elaborate on this topic if more information is needed on the flood storage. I thank you for taking a few minutes to listen to the presentation. And I'm happy along with Kevin and Chris to answer any questions that you may have on any of these three different items that were here in front of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Panic. Um, I, I understand uh, possibly where you're coming from, where new application, not a new application, but the building footprint did grow, where we would have to look at it a little different. Um, that's what my, what my concern was, you, 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 the footprint grew a little bit more, um, but I definitely credit you for the, uh, your effort in your presentation. Does we have any, uh, Questions from the uh, commission they would like to address with your panic. Not to interrupt you, but I'm, I'm having a very hard time hearing you. Yeah. When you logged in initially, we could hear you pretty well. Could you um, try and see if you can address that? This is uh, not going well. Yeah, Lou, we still can't hear what you're saying. If you want to try and call in on the phone, you could try that as another option. I can let you in that way. Yeah. 
do we have any other uh, commissioners that would like to address uh, Mr. Panic questions while Lou's trying to call in? Might as, well, might as well give Lou a minute. Nothing, huh, Derek? I don't see him trying to log in. Um, oh, he's at, he's at, he's actually calling me. Uh, Hello. Third-party caller from Puerto Rico. What's, what's the phone number, Derek, to call in? It would be <clears throat> one nine two nine. One nine two nine two zero five two zero five six zero nine nine. He's calling right now. We'll give him a minute to uh, ask his question. Derek, do you have the meeting ID? Yes. You you need it? Number is 922-6559-3851. Uh, Mr. Chairman, while we're waiting for a couple of commissioners here to make comments. I, I like the opportunity just to explain my memo. I believe all the uh, commissioners got a copy of my memo day, December 10th, um, with remaining comments on the application. I think um, last time around, there were a number of comments. Uh, they've all been adequately addressed, in my opinion. Um, the only outstanding uh, comment that is still, in my opinion, open for discussion is the amount of parking that's being proposed. Um, I think I, I tried to outline it pretty basically in my memo as to um, you know where staff is coming from as far as how we're evaluating the application. Um, that originated from um, the engineer submittal, their traffic engineer submitted um, recently for planning and zoning. And with that, they are referencing the ITE traffic manual for um, traffic generation for the new site. So Every time there's large applications like this, we look at traffic volume, traffic coming in and out at peak times of the day, how that affects the surrounding uh, roads in the area. Um, they've utilized the junior college as their uh, basis for generating traffic to and from the site. So that is why as a staff, we're looking at the same ITE manual that would look at the parking requirements for that traffic that's being generated to and from this site to look at what the parking needs are on site. You know, in short, um, it, it is guidelines, and that's usually a national standard on what you look at. Um, as I noted in my memo, um, a facility of this size with this many employees, this many students would typically have somewhere between 23 and 137 spaces. And, you know, not to get into the weeds too much, as Mr. Panic was trying to, you know, lay out his presentation. Um, similarly, for us, ITE is saying at a maximum, they should need 137 spaces for phase two. They've already constructed 178 that are existing today, which exceeds what the ITE manual would say would be necessary. And they're proposing, uh, I believe it's 236, maybe it's 234 as was just presented, but they're even uh, proposing more spaces than they do, than they have a need for, for if they were fully utilized. So the disconnect is if, if the, the traffic engineer is going to utilize the ITE manual for a junior college to, to determine how much traffic is coming and going from the site, then that same 
um, standard should apply to how much parking is required on the site. And the reason why we're having this conversation and we've had it at the Inland Wetlands Commission is, um, you know, my job as town engineer is to ensure that I'm making recommendations so you can make decisions based on what our regulations require. Um, our, our Inland Wetlands regulations you know, are very clear that you talk about LID, which has been discussed, um, but part of that is implementing runoff reduction, site planning and development. And that all ties back to our state permit from DEEP, our MS4 permit that requires us to, we're required to number one, to reduce the amount of pervious throughout town every year, but secondly, just to, to manage the amount of impervious. So where I'm coming from is just making a justification on, we are up against Gough Brook. The site is low lying, it's down in the floodplain. I just need to feel comfortable for myself that yes, the applicant has done everything they could to minimize site runoff coming off the site. I believe at this point, I don't feel that justification has been made that 234 or 236 spaces are required when standards would tell us it's 137. And even at full capacity, if, if you gave one space for one employee or student, that would be a 215. So they're still beyond that. And that's highly unusual. Usually in regulations, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's a fraction of one for each student or whoever's utilizing the site. So the reason why we're having this discussion now is because A, it affects the floodplain. It affects runoff from the site. I did write my memo in a way, um, understanding that there was some discussion uh, last month about you know inland wetlands and, and do you guys want to be setting uh, parking requirements, and maybe that's outside, you might feel uncomfortable or feel that's outside of your purview. So I wrote the memo in such a way saying that, you know, if, if, if it's your prerogative and you prefer to let the Planning and Zoning Commission make those judgments on what's considered reasonable or not for an application, then you, you could consider approving this application as is with a condition that states either you recommend them reduce it to a certain number of parking spaces or a condition that it be evaluated um, to reduce the number of parking spaces to the extent that they can during the planning and zoning process with the condition also that it would come back to this commission if, the, if any changes are made at the next phase of the review process during planning and zoning for them to come back and come back to this commission. It may be minor enough that that could be done administratively and they don't actually have to come back to the whole commission or maybe they do, um, but we, that would be determined at a later date. So just so, you understand as commissioners, I'm, I'm trying to do my job here, which is to ensure that the town is following its own permit requirements and following its regulations. You as commission job is to evaluate what your regulations are, what we're recommending as staff and make a determination on what you feel comfortable with. I mean, I will say I have been in correspondence with planning department staff that are gonna be involved in the next stage of the process. Um, we're all very comfortable with where we are with our recommendations so far. Um, you know. The, um, I personally am certainly open to negotiation and you know, maybe, maybe there's a happy medium we can meet here, um, but it just seems like at this point, it's, it's going well beyond what, what should be expected for this type of site. The numbers we're generating are very consistent with what their traffic engineer has been providing as a basis for substantiating traffic to and from the site. So I just wanna make sure that we are, um, we, we are serving our function here in, in managing. I'm not against the development. I certainly have no problem with this development here. I think personally, what's been built to date should be sufficient for what they have. And if, you know, if the applicant feels he wants more, um, you know, prime spaces closer to the building is understandable. I mean, there is a potential that he could remove some of the repark parking spaces at the very periphery of the site, in the very northern northeast corner are areas of the site that are very far from both the buildings and unlikely to be utilized. I mean, another option or a compromise that could be discussed is taking out some of that parking that's there, just the parking spaces, leave the driveways, leave the islands, leave all the site lighting and build some of those spaces closer to the building where he feels it'd be more beneficial. I'm not against parking near the building. I'm just looking to make sure that we don't allow uh, additional impervious area that that cannot that cannot be reasonably justified based on the data that's been presented to date. Thank you. Can I make a Is further it, comment to that? Or yeah, absolutely, Mr. Spanner. Yeah. So, uh, with all due respect to the town, to the commissioners, and to Mr. Gregor, 
I feel that it's highly undisputable when the tenant that I'm trying to build a building for writes a letter on the request of the town to prove what they need. And we're still going to then discount that letter and the amount of parking they say they need and use an ITE book that references a junior college. The fact that he used an ITE book to generate traffic flow in and out of the thing, of the space as a calculation certainly cannot be correlated to the number of parking spaces that I need. And quite frankly, as a layman in traffic engineering, which I'm a layman, I know nothing about it, but if, if, if 175 students show up at eight o'clock and they're at school from eight to three, as opposed to a junior college where you might come for class from nine to 11, then another group comes from one to three, then another group comes from five to seven. I would say that just general knowledge says that there'll be less trips back and forth uh, and less traffic flow, which is what he recommended in his letter. So I don't, I, I just, I, I don't understand the, uh, the justification that we're just going to toss out a letter that I was asked to uh, present to the commissioners showing the exact need. This is now not estimated. Again, I want everything to be actual. And right in the letter that I submitted, it says they need 175 spaces during the day and they need 40. Whether they're prime or whether they're by the railroad tracks, the spaces are what the spaces are. If you want to say that there's any discrepancy, it's the 19 extra spaces that are left after I subtract the actual needs for building one and two. There's 19 spaces that are quote unquote extra or overbuilt or whatever you'd like to label them. And quite frankly, when you factor in the factors that I did, which are you have visitors that come, there are drug reps that are gonna come to building one as they come to 1260. I mean, I have direct knowledge of this. Uh, you have people that leave 1260 the building I own in front in an ambulance and their car stays there for a couple of days. Nobody's factoring in the fact that of the 610 spaces, 40 are handicapped. So in order for this to work and those 19 spaces to be vacant at all times, I would have to have 40 people in every one of those handicapped spaces. Otherwise I need to use those 19 spaces. As soon as 10 of those handicapped spaces are not being utilized, I'll need 10 of those 19 actual proven spaces. So I just, I don't understand the logic. I, I understand the concept, but I think I've proven without a reasonable doubt that this is not egregious. And I've, you know, been very doing my due diligence to try and do that so much so as I gave back six spaces uh, that are the prime spaces. I reduced from having 25 extra spaces to 19 by reducing six spaces and creating more green space. And I honestly feel like I've done the right thing and I've exhausted all options. And, you know, I, I, we definitely disagree, but that's where I'm coming from. And I, I just don't see how that's refutable. Thank you. Well, Mr. Panic, uh, with, with regard to the IT manual, what I'm referring to is what your traffic engineer has provided. So if, if you feel the IT manual is not a, a, um, a valid source of information for this site, then the traffic engineer's report is, is not valid because that's what it is based on. So we're, we're, we would be basing the parking on his traffic generation that he's utilizing. Now, maybe it maybe needs to be different. Maybe that report needs to change. You know, I'm open to that discussion. Um, with regard to the handicap parking, I mean, I think this use is going to have a much lower requirement for handicap parking than maybe the medical facility did. So some of those handicap parking spaces probably can be restriped um, to be standard spaces. So that would be less of a concern of there being too much handicap and not enough need for this particular phase two construction. But I, I do feel going back and forth over spaces and I don't think that this is the commission's responsibility, how many spaces uh, exactly. I yeah. mean, that's not really our position back and forth, back and forth on, uh, you know, 234, 215, 19 extra, whatever. I mean, we're looking for some give back. You, you, you gave back six spots. I was hoping to get the pavers in there. Unfortunately, there's binder. At least it's not top court and binder. We can probably find an area that has a percentage of pitch a little bit less. 
but I think we'll be here all night going back and forth over the amount of parking spaces when I believe it should be a planning and zoning <laughs> issue uh, to discuss. Um, I'm not really sure if any of the other commissioners feel the same as I do. Um, I see the effort, but I really do see a push on spaces and, and, and I'm not sure that this is the commission's spot about spaces. Uh, position to debate how many spaces that are needed for the, for the area. Um, do, we, do, we, do we have any Chairman, other comments? Can you hear me? Anyone feel, feel the same? Mr. Chairman, it's Lou. Can you hear me yeah. now? Yeah, yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Yeah. I just, uh, sorry about that, everybody. I was having difficulty. Um, my, my experience with the uh, Harvard Healthcare building at 1290 is that um, I'm not sure exactly. I don't remember when it was built and what the uh, issues were, but the, the parking there is horrendous. And I don't want to see, I know there's been a lot of work by the town and by Mike Panic and his team to uh, have a nice development here. I don't want to see anything that's going to set that aside to make it secondary. And then after hearing uh, Derek, and um, in, in while I was dialing in, Derek, I was listening to what you had said. And, and I think uh, that uh, the additional um, discussion here, uh, I'll tend to agree with, uh, with the chairman on that. I think for the inland wetlands, and, and you can all tell me if I'm wrong, that I think we've satisfied uh, all of our requirements. And to that point, I think any further discussion uh, for any of the parking spots should be made uh, by planning and zoning. So uh, if the commissioners want to talk about that, I can be ready to make a motion. Okay. So may I uh, just, you know, something that I, I think, as I understand it, we're trying to, uh, the, the reason the parking spaces are of significance to us is because if we can reduce some of them, we can uh, cut down on some of the impervious area. And that makes the state requirements happy. I can think what's troubling me and it troubled me last week is that we started out with this now we're talking about it as if it's a new application. Well, we did approve something uh, a couple of years back that allowed Mr. Panic to have 610 parking spaces. We're down now to what, 500 and some odd, 56. So he's gonna cut out six and he cut out 50 in this new plan. So those parking spaces are gone. As I understand it though, we're not really supposed to take that into account. Is that correct, Derek? That that is meaningless? No, I'm not I'm not saying that. Um, what we were talking about was the we, there's been no loss in impervious area as a result of that. So this, as we discussed, you know, pretty extensively last month, this is a different application with a different use and a different size building with different parking requirements than a medical facility. You know, if you look at the phase one parking that is required or the, you know, the 320 spaces, this building is gonna have a higher utilization for parking than the medical building. So in, in, in essence, that's saying this has a higher need, has a higher ratio of parking per yeah. thousand square feet than the larger medical building, which doesn't seem to jive with what the discussions have been in the past or what standard practice would be. Um, to follow up on some of the comments, I, I don't disagree that this is normally outside of this commission's purview, um, which is why, as stated earlier, I, I did write the memo in a way in such that you could consider a conditional approval um, to allow the process to go to the next stage. And at that point, you know, we, I'm sure we can reach, uh, we, I'm sure we can reach a reasonable compromise that'll make everyone happy, but we probably, we just aren't there yet. Um, so that is an option to the commission. If you'd rather um, take that route, um, you know, this, this conversation could be resolved at the next level of, of review if needed. Mr. Chairman, can I make a comment? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, from my perspective, this portion of the property is part of a larger plan, right? A two-phase plan. And I think I remember from the last meeting that planning and zoning is going to be looking at a site plan modification application. Is that correct, Mr. Panic? Yes, this has okay. to go to planning and zoning. Um, and so I, I'm going to agree with, I think, Brent on there's a previous approval on the books. And it's complicated because we're looking at 
four different sets of regulations trying to make this decision with the MS4 permit and flood regulations and wetland regulations and we're sprinkling in zoning. So the conversation's complicated, but the straightforward thing that I see is that yes, the, the amount of impervious has not decreased, but the flood storage has increased, correct, with the proposal. And there's some infiltration going on that wasn't previously. And so to me, I think it's it's fair. I understand what what Derek is is looking at and where he's coming from. If there's an opportunity to remove some of the impervious with less parking, I understand that that um, perspective and approach, and I appreciate it as well. Um, but I think the fact that it's a modification to an approved two phase development plan that it's already been the impacts been reduced from my perspective. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from the commission? I, I have a question for Mr. Panic. I mean, we're, we're, we talked about the night, you know, I agree with uh, Ruthann Calabrese on now that, you know what she's saying there, uh, just to go a little beyond that though, the 19 spaces, I don't know if they've been located on the plan anywhere in particular. I know you had something, you had something drawn out. I, I didn't catch where they were there. Uh, the town engineer has suggested perhaps uh, keeping uh, some, some of the spaces maybe sort of back, not pave them, I guess, Eric, is that, do I understand that? I mean, would, would that be something with those 19 spaces? Would that be a possibility or? Well, I'm sorry. Kind of, kind of hold them back uh, to, to meet uh, you know, Derek's suggestion to the last memo that he wrote. Yeah, to, to answer the question, uh, I go back to my presentation, the 19 quote unquote extra spaces that I have yeah. don't take into account those situations that will definitely occur. So the 19 spaces are in excess of what I've proven that I need. Yeah. So when you get to those 19 spaces, you get into those things I talked about. As soon as one of those handicapped spaces is not uh, utilized, uh, you know, then I need one of the 19 spaces. That's one very real example. Two, if a, 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 a patient comes to the medical building and then has to be transported away in an ambulance, I get calls once a month from the front building when that happens. And uh, those people have to leave their car in a spot, sometimes only overnight, sometimes for two or three days because they can't come back to get it or they can't get somebody. So that's another real possibility for those 19 spaces. So. I labeled them extra spaces, but they could be utilized. And if they're not there and I change them or take them out or change them to impervious or, or whatever you want, they're gonna, you know, there's a very real chance that they'll be used. And, um, you know, I've spent the money to build those. I was, as uh, Ms. Calabrese said, I was approved for 610 spaces. And in order to minimize cost, I had to build the road that leads out to Mill Street. Um, so it made no sense to not pave the drive access from Mill Street yeah. to Puritan Road and to the railroad. It made no sense to leave a spot unpaved. You know, again, two years ago, we had no idea uh, as a company that Porter and Chester would come along and ask to build the building. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I really don't see, uh, you know, ripping up money that I spent and changing blacktop to grass uh, as, a, as, a, as an option. I really just don't. And I, I really think that those extra quote unquote spaces could be utilized under many circumstances that I've explained a couple of times here. Right. Okay, so uh, you don't see that option that the town engineer proposes, you don't see that as a possibility the way things are? 
I don't from a need standpoint yeah. and from a practicality standpoint, I really don't. Okay, thank you. I, and I think I demonstrated two years ago and in these last two meetings that I'm trying to, you know, find that quote unquote happy medium. And I agreed reluctantly to give up six spaces to, to create a thousand square foot of green space um, and lose some of the spaces that I was already approved for two years ago. So, you know, I, uh, I certainly over the years, most of you on the committee know who I am, know the projects that mm -hmm. I built and how I take care of our properties and, and approach these kind of meetings. I hate to be called the landlord. I always want to be called the property <laughs> because we do things the right way. Um, we don't put band-aids on things. You know, if you drive out there today and walk around the fence and start walking around and see the trees that I planted, the wetlands that I did, uh, you know, th that I created, uh, the extra things I put in the ground to hold the rainwater from the roof, including this extra 5,000 square feet of roof that will be built. I have to enlarge what was approved two years ago to have, you know, the correct calculations to drain that rainwater. I mean, I, I'm not some, you know, Florida developer trying to push through a project here. I, I'm, a, you know, I'm well entrenched in the town and well known uh, for doing the right thing for many, 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 many years. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm trying. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Chairman, just a couple of points on that. Um, you know, the, the requirements he'd mentioned, he's meeting, which every applicant that comes through is required to meet as part of the regulations. Um, with regard to the handicapped parking, I mean, as I mentioned, one of those things that we can do to address some of that concern is to restripe some of the existing handicap. I believe in this area, there's about 14 handicapped parking spaces. Uh, if he got all, if he put in all the parking he's proposing, only seven parking spaces are required. So, I mean, there's options to address some of those concerns. Um, you know, as I mentioned, this is, you know, there, there's certainly room for discussion. I don't think we've finished that discussion yet. Um, so I, I would leave it with the commission as to determine if you're, you're comfortable making a conditional approval, at least making a, a recommendation or a strong recommendation to the planning and zoning commission that they at least look at this as part of their process um, would be helpful for staff um, as we move the process forward uh, to reach a, reach a solution that everyone can be agreeable to. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, if um, um, you think I can make a motion, if you'd like, based on everything that's been stated. Yes, uh, please. Uh, do we have a motion for application, uh, motion for approval for application number 74021? Yes, for Phoenix 1210 LLC, 1210 Silocene Highway, uh, I motion to approve with the conditions that uh, Mr. Panic and team work with planning and zoning and discuss the possible additional uh, pervious pavers and other items that we discussed today for a final determination by and approval of uh, planning and zoning. Okay, do, do we have a second for that motion with approval with condition? This is Clark, I'll second that. Okay, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We have approval for application number 74021, Phoenix 1210 LLC with conditions. Moving on to, thank you, Mr. Panay, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Happy holidays to all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you as well. Thank you. Mo moving on to the Conservation Com Commission business, seeing none, general business, approval of minutes dated November 17, 2021. Ryan, I believe I was at that meeting and I don't think my initials are there. If I'm reading the right one. Yes, that was the this last meeting. Actually, Commissioner Sanzaro, I do not remember. Yeah, he's on he, he's on there. Oh yes, that's right. Okay. Yes, he's there. Okay. I got to uh, say, we... those are extremely thorough minutes. Yes. <laughs> yes they are. Quotations. Do we have a motion for approval? I'll move to approve the minutes. This is Brent. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
Um, moving on, correspondence, no actions are required. Uh, do we have a motion for adjournment? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just before we adjourn, just one thing I wanted to mention to the commission. Um, mm -hmm. I had spoken with the town manager about having um, the town attorney comes in periodically to talk to different commissions, just about um, your orders of how, how to run the meetings, uh, responsibilities of specific commissions. Um, so she had offered to have him come in and do that at some point in the future for this group, which um, I would okay. recommend. I think it'd be beneficial. Um, we do have some new members and it would kind of mm -hmm. just put everybody on the same page. So just something to keep in mind, uh, either John or myself will send out uh, some information and try to solicit some nights that might work for everybody and see if we can schedule that sometime in the next month or two. So just to give you a heads up. Okay, thank you. Um, motion for adjournment. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, second. Okay, that was uh, uh, Commissioner Calabrese. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Thank you. Yep. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Happy, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank you, everyone.